Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson in Software Architecture Monday, lesson number 53, we'll take a look at the use of sagas within distributed transactions, whether it be microservices or any sort of other distributed architecture. Within any given service, whether it be a microservice or a macro service, we can do updates, deletes, inserts into our database, find an error, and then roll back. In other words, we have what's called ACID or database transactions within any given service. However, within a distributed architecture, once we span across any remote access protocol, I no longer have an ACID transaction. I can't do commits and rollbacks or hold locks on other tables. And actually this <laughs> turns out is a good thing. There's several ways of actually approaching distributed transactions. I want to show you one way that's evangelized by Chris Richardson. And as a matter of fact, his website, microservices.io, actually has a really good write-up about using sagas. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with sagas. My hate relationship is the fact that it really at its, at its core is really kind of a form of a compensation framework. In other words, unrolling or undoing a series of operations, which I'm not really fond of within a distributed architecture. However, we can use sagas in a little bit different way. And let me show you kind of uh, the way I actually like to use sagas. <clears throat> When we're trying to maintain a transactional unit of work across separate deployment units, I've got an order placement microservice here and also a payment service. Now, I'm using a remote access protocol messaging here, and so I can't tie these to a database or a ACID transaction. However, watch what happens. I can use state, in other words, create a state machine to be able to have these connected in a decoupled way. And let me show you how a saga might work. So I place an order, which goes into the order placement service. What I do then is place the order, but I create it in a state called created. And so this is not ready to be fulfilled yet because I haven't applied the payment. Because that has to be involved in a transactional unit of work. <laughs> By the way, everybody, <laughs> when I'm saying transactional, I'm actually doing air quotes. But watch what happens. Using async messaging, I send a message, which called a fire and forget message, over to the payment service. Now, I'm not expecting a response back right now from that. That's just a one-way transmission. Now, the payment service tries to apply the credit card and finds out that either my expiration date is incorrect or I have insufficient funds. And so what it does in turn is it sends a message to me, again, in a fire and forget message, and I update my state to rejected. Now, in this case, I may delete that order completely, but here I can mark it as rejected so that maybe I send a message to the client or the customer to say, can you use another kind of credit card? And then the payment service applies it and it becomes approved. As a matter of fact, let's see kind of the happy path of this. I place an order, it gets inserted, gets a state of created. I send a fire and forget message, totally asynchronous over to the payment service. I'm done. Payment service now says, yep, the payment was applied either using a gift card, store credit, or a credit card, and it sends a message over to me. I now can say that it's approved, and now it's ready to be fulfilled. My love relationship with sagas is the fact that I really like this idea of identifying what services are involved in, quote, again, air quotes, a transactional unit of work. And so let me show you what I typically do. I'll create an identity annotation. In this case, I'm going to call it a saga. Notice in Java here, uh, this is an example in Java. <clears throat> it would be an annotation. So I have a public interface with the annotation there. And I have one value, which is the type of transaction it is. Now, what I like to do, everybody, is keep all of my transactions that span multiple services. You see, the enum there for transaction would not list every single API method, but only those API requests from the business that actually span multiple services. And in this case, out of dozens of operations, we only have three, order placement, order cancel, and new customer. And now I will take that annotation, and what I can do is on the entry point class, 
of my microservice. And how I identify that is through another identity annotation called service entry point. On the service entry point, because I don't want to add this to every single class in the microservice or service, but there's the entry point, order placement service. What I can do is mark a saga, as you can see right here, to say that this is involved in a transactional unit of work with multiple services called order placement. And watch this. Here's my payment service. Now this happens to be the entry point of that particular microservice, hence the service entry point. But look at the saga here. Notice that it's possible to have one service be involved in multiple sagas or multiple transactions. And so here, the payment service is responsible or involved in the order placement because when the order placement comes in, it's going to place the order. Payment has to actually apply the payment. However, order cancel, which might be another microservice, would now invoke the payment service as well to apply a refund. In that case, it's going to be part of the order cancel. You know, one very important, this by the way is my love relationship. I love the fact because now I can start, watch this, to tie services together programmatically. There's no documentation here. This is why I love annotations so much. I can write a command line interface that walks through my code and finds all sagas and all services relating to those sagas. And this kind of produces that real-time documentation. Furthermore, this gives the developer information to know whatever I'm doing in this payment service, know that this is involved in a transactional unit of work. So if I choose to deploy in the middle of the afternoon, I may disrupt order placement and order cancel operations as well. One important thing to remember is that when you're using sagas, and this is my technique that, that I use for kind of doing sagas, um, please remember that only put a saga here on those transactions that span multiple services. If order placement was completely self-contained within this service right here, which this would be the entry point, this is not a saga. So for more information, um, you can actually go to Chris Richardson's site, which is on microservices.io slash patterns slash data slash saga.html to get more information about sagas. Um, it, they're, they're useful at least to identify what services, even if you don't do the rollbacks or state machines, to be able to see what services are involved in that. Um, also, of course, all these lessons are located um, in Software Architecture Monday at developer2architect.com slash lessons. And so every Monday you have a new lesson and you can find out where I'm speaking at conferences or public trainings through my upcoming events portion of the website. So this has been Lesson 53, Distributed Transaction Using Sagas. And again, my name is Mark Richards and thanks for listening.